Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Revelations from the Core Room of Heaven. Let's get after it. Uh, God, we thank you for being here. We thank you for your counsel, for your understanding, for who you are in our lives. And if you guys have kind of been following along with any of the teachings at the Lighthouse and kind of what we've been given, uh, communication with God, relationship with God, him revealing himself to you, you entering into that servant, teacher, master, son, daughter, father, friend, friend, relationship. You know, that's, that's what we're all about here. Everything relating to you and God, everything relating to who you are in heaven, who God says you are, your true identity, all these things, you know, that's, that's crucial into the understanding of the courtrooms of heaven because what are we doing? We're interacting with heaven. And in order to interact with heaven, you need to fit into your spot. You know, God made you specifically. And the enemy, if you look around about you, isn't there a lot of false identities? Is there a lot of confusion going on? I could go on, but I'm going to stop it there. So this episode is called The Council and Council of the Lord. Two different words there, but very close. The Council, C-O-U-N-C-I-L and C-O-U-N-S-E-L of the Lord. So first, let's look at the C-O-U-N-C-I-L of the Lord. And, and, and that word, you know, a council, that speaks of kind of a group coming together to, th- to talk things out, to consult, kind of a, a sharing of secrets, that kind of protective body, that protective relationship of counsel, which God wants to have with you. Let's look in Jeremiah chapter 23. We're going to start at verse 16, and God's talking about false prophets here. Okay, let's see how it relates to a council or the council of the Lord. So this is what the Lord of hosts says. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. There are false prophets speaking to people. God was coming against that. He continues, they are filling you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. Verse 17, they keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says that you will have peace. And to everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, these prophets are saying, no harm will come to you. Verse 18, but which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and hear his word? So God's saying, these prophets have not stood with me in my counsel. Why is this important? Well, there exists between God and his prophet, this spot this council between God and his prophets. You know, there's God loves relationships. God loves sharing his heart with you. He also loves sharing it with you and the person by you. There's a time when God's going to counsel a whole body. You you know, this council of the Lord, we need to step in it. These false prophets had no part in it. And let's, let's go on here. So verse 18, God says, but which of them stood in the council of the Lord to see and hear his word? So in the counsel of the Lord, you, you get the truth. You see what God's saying. So we go down to verse 22. God's gonna start talking about his counsel a little more. So, if these, so he says, if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and turned them from their evil ways and deeds. <clears throat> Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord? Am I not a God far away? Okay, so God sees all, God knows all. God's counsel, how he sees that situation. You know, do we need God to understand something? If you notice those false prophets, they were speaking according to the scripture. They were speaking visions from their own minds and all of the stuff that they could supply, what they thought. They did not have a relationship with God. They weren't submitted to God, but they were acting like they were. And they were deceiving many. So don't we know that if we want to serve God and be a part of, you know, to be an active Christian, we need to know him, okay? We need to know him. And who are we as Christians? As new covenant believers in the God of everything, the God of existence, the God who chose to send Jesus, who are we? Well, 1 Peter 2, 9. This is crucial. This is who we are. This is awesome. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession to proclaim the virtues of him who called you out of darkness 
into his marvelous light. He called you what out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's something so special to light. There's something so special to God being light. You know that it says God is light and there is no darkness in him. God is pure light and he calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Those false prophets had no part of God's light. They had their own thoughts. They had their own things, which is really darkness. And that's where they were speaking from. If we want to be properly accountable to God, and if we want to do his will and crush darkness, of which we're meant to, we need to speak out of his light. And we do that by fellowshipping with God, by proclaiming the virtues of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So God's kingdom, you guys, is a kingdom of light because God is a God of light. So let's move our understanding now to counsel, C-O-U-N-S-E-L, Psalms 33, 10. And so this word means advice. And I don't mean to make that so complicated, but there's, those words are similar. They mean close to the same things, but there's a little bit going on here. So Psalms 33, 10, the Lord frustrates the plans of nations. He thwarts the devices of the peoples. Verse 11, the counsel of the Lord stands forever, the purposes of his heart to all generations. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. So the counsel, we can kind of take that as when you're getting close to him, he's going to give you counsel. He's going to give you informed, perfect advice over what to do, how to do, when to do, what you need to do in your life, what needs to be done in other people's lives, what the enemy's doing, all these things. So when we want to advance within the courtrooms of heaven, we're going to have to sit under the counsel of God and be open to his counsel to us. So we're going to have to kind of develop that relationship by being aware that it's available to us. And is it available just a little bit? Is it available to you just so you know that, you know, Jesus loves you? I mean, that's a great truth, but it really gets so into depth. And so the government of heaven is a thing. Uh, The word of God says that the government rests upon his shoulders, the shoulders of Jesus Christ. That was in a prophecy. So the church, which is to come, according to the Old Testament, that government would rest upon his shoulders. When Jesus came, he's our rock. He gave his people the keys to the kingdom. This kingdom that never ends, he gave who? The royal priesthood, all these keys. Now, in order to know how to operate these keys, we need the council. We need to understand that God has a ear, he has a mouth, he's speaking, he's listening. So we need to have ears and mouths that see and hear to receive his counsel. And there's a um, very kind of specific understanding. There's a very uh, great need for precise wisdom that God's bringing us into. Okay, and it is a part of your covenant. Psalm 25, verse 14 The Lord confides in those who fear him and reveals his covenant to them. He reveals his covenant to them. So the extent of the New Testament, the new covenant, the extent of your relationship with God should be continually being revealed to you. You shouldn't know at all. You should grow into more understanding of your covenant, of what's really available to you, of what you're supposed to do, of what your purpose is. All these things, we should be really growing in all these things. And, you know, uh, we've talked a lot about different courts, becoming right with God, removing the enemy. And what are we doing? We're freeing up ourselves to walk the path that God has for us, to walk at our destiny. So Psalms uh, 25, 14, the New King James Version says that. It says, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So the secret of the Lord. So there's very specific secrets God has for you. There's very specific counsels that God has for you, okay? And God did this with Abraham. And uh, this is a, a very telling scripture. And you need to understand that God loves you. God loved Abraham. God loves us both, you know, with him. We're children of Abraham. But a part of what he was seeing in Abraham's life was you, is what Abraham would allow to come to pass. God made a covenant with Abraham. It set the groundwork for everything that would happen for Jesus to come, for you to be reconciled back to God. Abraham was the father of many nations. Well, you're a part of that nation. You're a part of all that. 
But uh, Genesis 17, verse 1, let's look here. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Are we not under the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yes, we're under this established covenant. And Abraham fell face down, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. So that right there, God was revealing his covenant to Abraham. But notice, he was revealing Abraham's destiny. So in the counsel of the Lord, God's gonna reveal his covenant to you. Psalm 25, 14, we just read it. The Lord confides in those who fear him and reveals his covenant to them. Have you had that moment with God that Abraham had, that Abram had of God revealing his destiny and purpose to you, of showing his covenant, that relationship? You know, a covenant is the proof of a bond. It's the proof of an established relationship. You know, that, that's what it is. There's a tendency to really kind of over-religiousize, if that's a word, uh, everything with God. When it's really, you know, God expects us to live a certain way and all that stuff, and it comes through relationship with him, through him revealing himself to you and growing with him in love. Like, we need to kind of grasp it as a church, just that right there, and just to push forward in that place. Why? That's a place of, a, of the love walk. That's a place of the true love connection with God, and there's where all of your power and authority is, period. So we're going to talk about different spots in heaven, you guys, that you can utilize this counsel in. We're going to talk about it in the next episode. I hope I laid the groundwork here that God has very specific counsel for you. He has a covenant to reveal to you. It's in the word of God. That word of God is active and alive and ready for you to partake with it to read the word of God and to learn just what it's saying to us, to learn the covenant that's being given to you, you know, and you only do that through fellowship with God, reading the word, getting supercharged with that. So until next time, I will see you.